In this brief tutorial, we're going to quickly learn how to create a new database in SQL Server Management Studio using SQL Server 2019 Express. First thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the data, connect to the database engine, and we're going to put our server name in, which is the name of my computer with a backslash, and then the name of my SQL Server Express instance. Uh, you can note that mine is SQL Express 2019. Uh, I named it that during the installation. We're going to click Connect. And under Databases, if we're going to expand it, and we're going to do a right click, and we're going to choose New Database. Here we will give this database a name as our starting point. And I'm going to call this Dr. Wolf's College Database. Something meaningful is always good. Uh, and then I want to call your attention to a couple of settings uh, that in a production environment, if I was doing this, um, I would change. And everything's here on the database files. I would change my initial sizes of my log and my primary data file when I do the setup. Uh, because what's going to happen here, 8 megabytes is very small. And typically, I'm going to have a database that's going to get very large in most production systems. Uh, and a lot of times what I'll do is I'll carve out an initial size to where I think maybe the first uh, six months or a year of growth would be. Uh, so I can allocate that on my disk in my space to have available. So I don't find a shortage later on. Uh, it'll also prevent auto growth activities uh, from occurring very frequently. So if we're at 8 megs, when we get close to that limit, auto growth will kick in and grow uh, to 64 megs. So I want to encourage you uh, in a production environment, think through your max size and auto growth rules. Uh, it's good to read about what they do and how they work. Uh, the more growth activities you have during production uh, in your online transaction processing systems, it's going to cause overhead and performance concerns. So you may want to change um, auto growth activities. It may be something you want to monitor and schedule. Uh, you can change it by size. You can do it by percentages. Uh, same thing with max size. You know, if you have unlimited storage, which is not typically the case, Unlimited is safe, but uh, in reality, you know, you want to be mindful of your operating system and uh, your space storage allocation. And if you go in here, you can see your options. We can limit it and we can disable it and change it. Uh, disabling this is risky too, uh, because if it's not enabled, then you'll run out of space and uh, you'll have database performance issues and um, outages. Uh, so if you're going to disable it, then you need to put jobs in place and schedule jobs that send notifications, alerts, or will handle the auto growth activities. And you'd, you would actually have those execute on off hours uh, time. So those are some options you look into. And then the path is necessary to review uh, because you're not going to typically want your log files and your data files to sit in the default directory. It's rare that you would actually you know, have a C drive on a server large enough to support your databases. Uh, you're likely going to move those to some other path and network locations or another drive on your servers. Again, depending upon your infrastructure and your setup, you would change those uh, and consider changing those for a production environment. Those are the basics. Uh, things that I look at. Uh, the, the database owner, again, um, you might have a standard operating procedure, what you might want to set that as, but this is my local computer. So for demonstration and tutorial purposes, I'm not going to make any of these changes. Um, I will leave them all as they are and hit OK here, and that'll create the database. But before I do that, another cool feature about SQL Server Management Studio, it will let you see the, the database script that's going to actually execute for any activities that you're going to perform using the menus that are available. So it's always good to know uh, what the script looks like. And if you're going to migrate from dev environments to QA, UAT production in the real world. Uh, I always recommend generating the scripts and perhaps even writing the scripts from scratch in the future, but generating them and keeping them 
Uh, so you see what they look like, and you can tweak the scripts uh, and, and, and actually further refine things. Uh, but if you save this copy, now you can run the same script on your next level environment. So say if you're moving from UAT to production, you have this to recreate the process. So I always encourage you to consider the scripts, uh, review them, and you can see, you know, here's all of your um, create scripts and your alter scripts for all of the database settings necessary uh, that will execute when you actually run and, and run and run this uh, here by hitting OK. Now I could close this and just run the script as one option or I can hit OK and I'm just going to hit OK here. And when that's done, it's very quickly going to create the database. It's now in my folder of databases and available to me to actually build out my entities and, and or my tables that I'm going to necessarily have in this database. So I'll close down my script after I've saved it somewhere. Uh, and this completes the tutorial of creating a new database from scratch using SQL Server Management Studio. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to put them below. I encourage you to subscribe to my channel for future upcoming videos. And you could also reach out to me at professorwolf.com. And I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you.